All right, I'm Philip, and I'm presenting on Intro to NFCs. Uh, this is going to be more of a general presentation. I won't go too in depth. So. It's it's clicking weird. Yeah. There we go. All right. So who am I? Uh, I'm Philip. I'm a second year cybersecurity. I'm from Georgia. Uh, I like swimming, and I love cats. As you can see, especially my cat. Uh, so, NFC, um, NFC stands for Near Field Communication. It's a standardized protocol for like really short range communication, especially for sending small bytes, small bits of data. Um, it's an evolution of the RFID protocol, and it's actually, despite the fact that it's only really come into play in the last couple of years, it's not that new. It was implemented in like a Nokia phone in 2007. So, so RFID is radio frequency identification and it gets confused with NFC a lot because it was the predecessor. So RFID is more just a one-way protocol where you set data on whatever chip and then whenever you ask for it, it just sends back that, sign, that one number. It's kind of like a barcode, kind of a a uh, barcode with radio, and it just sends back that identifier number over and over again. It never changes. Whereas NFC is designed to be more uh, duplex or two-way protocol, where it talks with it talks with the card or chip or whatever you're talking to, because there is more brains behind it. And NFC operates on the 13.5 megahertz band of the spectrum. It's reserved for uh, for those cards and NFC and RFID, how they work, um, it's through inductive coupling, which is physics. Basically, when you send a signal from a powered device, it creates a charge in the antenna coil of the other device, which then provides power and data, and then the other device will send back data. And NFC is an upgrade because it allows encryption of data to a degree and then also uh, calculation of like private keys and encryption. Uh, and the upside to both NFC and RFID is both protocols only need to have one device have, have any kind of power behind it. It just has to be the one device that's sending the signal has to have power and then the other one doesn't need any signal. It just needs or it doesn't need any power from a battery. It just needs a signal in order to send back data. And this is a this is a good diagram. So basically, you have your you have your two antennas, and the emitter sends out a signal, which causes an electromagnetic field, and it does a bunch of physics stuff, creates a charge in the coil, and then that actually powers the pack for the short amount of time it needs to send the data back. And it's really cool because like you, it's one of those devices where you just don't need power. But you can do so much with it. And, and NFCs are more are mostly designed as a proximity-based protocol where you have to be within a couple centimeters distance and no further. Um, they do have some other standards which have been designed recently, which are designed for longer range NFC. So still you still get the perks of the encryption and whatnot, but it's designed to be accessed at like a meter's length away, or like a yard or so, so designed to be designed to be accessed further away. And th there are two different like ISO protocols for those. If you want to get more, look more into that. Um, I've seen, I've actually seen one or two long range tags coming into play for like ski resorts because they use it so they can scan who you are, but from a distance. Yeah. And applications and uses. Um, it's used a lot nowadays in mobile pay with tap to pay either on your phone or your card. Um, another thing is contactless data transfer. Um, beyond, beyond just payments, you can send data between two phones, like, uh, contact information, Wi-Fi, password, Bluetooth connection. You can set up a lot of stuff to quickly send, granted it is small data, small amounts of data, but you can send data like that quickly. 
Um, they're also used for access control, kind of verify you, who who you say you are with with your uh, wireless key. And then IoT devices as kind of a way for extremely low powered devices to be able to send data. Like uh, I can't think of any examples right now, but for IoT devices that don't have like maybe they don't have consistent power or they just need to be checked every now and then and they don't need to be draining power all the time. Yeah. And so there are different types. Um, the most common ones are the NXP MyFair type cards. Um, I underline classic because it is the classic one is the most popular and widely used across the industry from everything I found. So you have the Classic, the ultralight, which is designed to be extra small and fit into small chips and whatnot, so it's more flexible use. And then Deskfire, not as common, but it's starting to grow, and that's a more secure version with uh, better encryption. And there are, Sony has its own pri proprietary version that I haven't found too many uses, use cases of it. And then the three on the bottom, the end tag, and the other two. Those were the one, the types that I found that they actually are the longer range. So you don't have to be within a centimeter or two. You can be within a meter or a yard of like a tag. You can have that tag within a yard of the reader and it'll still read, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to talk more about the classic because that is the most popular card type. And it's also one of the vulnerable ones. So, so card security... Uh, again, most NFC cards actually do support encryption, and that is one of the pros of them. And that is written into the standard where they have special sections of their data is designed to have to have um, encryption keys, and they have added functionality where they can encrypt and generate random numbers for the encryption. Um, payment cards and death, the MyFair Deskfire support better encryption schemes and public-private keys for authentication. And those two, especially, especially payment cards, have had a list, they have a list of different security protocols, especially card payments, because any issuer that's caught with an insecure format gets fined and sued. So they have a lot of support for security on those two. Um, another perk of security with, with these cards is the limited distance it takes to scan the card and a lot of cards and the low power output they give makes it harder, not impossible, but harder to read cards um, and read the data on the cards without having to be close to them. So, and plus nowadays we have like RFID blocking wallets and uh, sleeves and pouches and whatnot. So you can have your cards somewhat protected from like anyone just broadcasting and trying to find data. Uh, once again, it's not impossible to scan them from a distance. There are great antennas out there and devices that can do it. It's just a lot harder to. So, vulnerabilities, um, they can be spoofed. Uh, one of the classic attacks is just you scan the card and you can just pull the data off of it. And once you do that, you just spoof it back, especially if it's, especially if the data is just encrypted in one way. Um, it's most common with like flipper zeros, but it's also found you can do it with an Android or Android or iPhone. They both support NFCs and there is data out there where you can just spoof the card. Um, there, there's the really popular MyFair Classic Nested attack, which is really popular and really effective despite the fact that it's, the cards are so, uh, prolific in the industry. And another, the third attack is a theoretical one where if you increase the range of the card, you can use the card without someone knowing. Uh, that one is a bit more complicated and I haven't seen the entire proof for it just yet, but it's um, similar to what they're doing, similar to the attacks being used on cars in Canada, where you have two receivers and transmitters. So one receives the card data or it receives the power coming from the car looking for the NFC and then it sends that data over to the card and then it sends the data back. So it acts as if it acts as if they're right next to each other, but because you have the hardware in there mimicking them, 
you can have a greater distance. And I haven't actually seen a proof of concept with that yet, but I've seen it popping up more and more of researchers using it. So uh, that one's becoming more um, more useful and well known of a vulnerability. Uh, again, with the MyFair Classic attack, um, it is one of the most common card types used and it is very widespread in industry. It's found in hotels, buildings, um, lots of Lots of buildings love using it for security, hotel key cards especially. Um, the problem is those cards have a very weak random number generator, which out of 32 bits of random numbers, it, 32 bits generated by that random number generator, only 16 of them will ever have entropy, meaning you can detect patterns in the other 16 bits. So it's a very easy attack. And what you do is you have the card generate a bunch of random numbers multiple times, and then you can calculate out what numbers it uses to generate a private key. And then you can use that to guess the private key and brute force whatever data it's sending to and from the card. And that attack's been used to generate the entire data, like the key stored on the card for access. And theoretically, it works in a lot of hotels. Never been uh, tested before. But theoretically, it works in a lot of hotels. Um, some of the tools I like to use is the Flipper Zero. It's kind of how I got started with it. Um, it's, it is a bit of a pricey tool. It gives you kind of a starting point for NFC, RFID, and a bunch of other things. Another one is the M1 multi-tool, which is kind of a Flipper competitive uh, competitor. I'm not sure where to get it. I've just seen it popping up more and more. It's another Kickstarter campaign that I'm not sure I'm not sure how well it's doing, but I've seen it more and more, so I think it's another Flipper competitor. And then you have NFC Tools. It's an app by uh, WackDev or WakeDev, and it's for Android and iPhone. And so once again, you can run you can run any attack on any NFC device off of Android or iPhone. And then you can just go online and get any general reader writer for NFC. And they have them all over Amazon. They might be more expensive, but they're also more specialized for it and better at reading multiple cards, higher power. Uh, questions? And these are my sources. I really like the RFID handbook because that one discusses a lot of NFC RFID stuff. All right, and that's it.